Hello, and uh, welcome to this, this guide to living your design. And in this guide to living your design, we're going to look at the madness, the madness of the normal mind. I like that as a title, don't you like that? The madness of the normal mind. Well, you know, the homogenized world is, um, is a world that is simply not in context. It's not in context with the possibilities of the beings that are wandering around. It is something that is emerged and taken over and overwhelmed the way in which humanity operates and the way in which humanity thinks. And basically, what I want to take you through today is uh, uh, a day in the life of conditioning. What it really means for us. Most people really don't think about it. It's like a body graph. You know, the moment that you look at your body graph, you think your body graph is something static. You know, you look at that image there and, uh, you know, it seems like it really is a very fixed thing. But in fact, it's not. I mean, after all, it is a graphic representation of the way in which we are imprinted and the way in which we are open. But in essence, obviously, there's much more that is going on. It isn't just simply that the graph is something that is isolated from all of life. It can't be. You know, when you look at a graph for analysis, the way you're looking at a graph for analysis is that you're taking it out of the context of life. In other words, you're isolating it away from time and space. But of course, we all know that we are here in this life, in these bodies, in movement, on this plane. And that one of the things to keep in mind, one of the things that is so profoundly a part of being distracted from what is correct for you is that we live in a program. And we live in a program that is constantly interconnecting with us. And it's constant interconnection with us. These are seductions. They're little carrots that are held in front of you that pull you this way or that way or the other way. And it's going on every single day. And not only is the program pulling you this way and that way, it is conditioning you, conditioning you in terms of the theme of that day, conditioning you in terms of your perspective of that day. In other words, as you're alive in this life, your graph, in that sense, is something that is alive and interacting, not simply with you know, what most people are interested in, how do I hook up to the next person, you know, what's our connection with the other but you know, it's never the two of you alone. It's never the two of you alone. It's the two of you in the program together. You know, it's a trinity in that sense. And it's the program that is creating all of the conditioning field that's around. So let's begin our journey with um, a sacrificial lamb. And you can look here, we have this illustration for you. And um, it's an example that's taken out of... Uh, of, of a collection of mine of, of charts that I use in teaching. And um, you can see, if you look at this example, you can see that you're dealing with somebody that is very, very strong, single definition. Here is somebody that has uh, a real sense of identity. There are all these areas in them that are defined, that are hooked up together. But look at the openness. Now, one of the things to keep in mind about somebody who is a single definition is that if you have single definition, in other words, if all those colored in centers in your design are connected to each other, then it means that the openness, that is the open centers, the counterpoint to that, that these are areas of very, very deep conditioning. So I've taken this example of using a single definition because the levels of conditioning or the way we are conditioned differs depending on the way in which your definition operates. In this case, the open centers are the most powerful conditioning force, the most powerful normalizing force, quote unquote, because that's really what it is. So let's take a look at the openness that's here, and we can see that we've got five centers that are open. And in those five centers that are open, let's begin with the most powerful ones in terms of impact. And we have three that are deeply, deeply powerful. We begin with the heart center. Here we have the situation in which you have somebody that has a completely open heart center. Now remember something about the not-self. The way the not-self operates, the way normalcy operates, is that what we are not determines how we think. What we are not determines what we think. 
So you have an open heart center. Now the heart center, the strategy of the open heart center is always to try to prove its worthiness because it doesn't feel worthy. In other words, it can be driven and it can be driven in a very profound way to do things in order to try to prove its worthiness or to accept lesser roles, or to accept lesser money, or to accept lesser, 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 you know, because they want to be able to show how good they are, how important they are, how right they are, how this and that. And of course, none of that is correct for them. And I want you to understand that what is normal for this person is to want to prove themselves. This is part of their normal, not self-purpose. I am here in this life to prove my worthiness. Exactly opposite from what they are. I mean, exactly opposite from what they are. Nearly 70% of humanity have an undefined heart center. This is a universal problem. It's a deep, deep problem. This dilemma of this sense of unworthiness and this determination to try to do anything to prove one's worth. Whoa. But anyway, I don't want to get away from our story. So we have, we have an undefined heart center. Now remember, the conditioning of the mind. This is all about the way the mind is going to work. It's all about the normal mind. The normal mind. So this person's normal mind, they're going to make decisions based on whether they can prove they're worthy or not. You know, so somebody says to them, can you help me with this? And even though they don't want to do it, even though they don't particularly like the person, there's actually a part of their mind going, maybe we should really do this, you know. Maybe we should do this to show them that we are really worthy and, you know, so forth and so on. These people end up getting incredibly used in their life. Here's somebody with an undefined emotional system. Avoid confrontation and truth. I mean, that's the program. Avoid confrontation and truth. So this is the way the mind works. You know, this is the way the mind is going to process things. This is the normal mind of this person. Trying to get out of situations where they have to deal with very uncomfortable, ooh. Lying to themselves. It's all going to be okay. You know. Human beings, eh? This is somebody with an undefined splenic system. This is somebody that is very, very insecure. This is somebody that's always looking for the feel good. This is somebody that's going to hold on to things that aren't good for them. And this is the way their mind's going to work. It's their mind holding on to things that aren't good for them. It's their mind that wants them to avoid confrontation and truth. It's their mind that wants them to say yes to things that are ridiculous in order to try to prove to people who don't give a damn that you're better than you think you thought they thought you were. Ah, the madness of the normal mind. It's really quite something. And this person's in a hurry, 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 you know? They're under enormous pressure with their undefined root and their open head center. They think about all these things that don't matter. So here is this not-self person. Here is the way they're set up mentally to deal with things. The way they're going to process the world. They're going to process it through that openness. They're going to process it through the not-self filters and this is how they're going to feel normal. That it's normal for them to think about a lot of things that don't matter. That it's normal that they spend their lives trying to prove themselves. It's normal that they don't like confrontations. It's normal that life puts them under pressure. They take all of that and say, it's normal. They're so messed up. And yet you don't see that either, really. Because it's all relative. They're all in the same homogenized program against each other as a measurement. So whatever is going to happen to the being, here are the main themes for them. This is what their life is about. It isn't about what the possibilities are there for them in terms of who they are. It isn't about coming to grips 
with what it is to be a manifesting generator and to understand the profound power that is there in a manifesting generator when they become a generator instead of being forced to be a manifester by their not self mind that tells them look we're unworthy so we have to do this thing and do it fast because we're under pressure and don't get into any trouble because we don't want any trouble we don't want to say no to these people because then we got a confrontation so let's just do it fast and get the damn thing out of the way that's how they spend their whole lives with everything the things they do the people they care about and it's all normal it's all normal why do you think that it's everywhere in the literature it's what children grow up with it's the propaganda that is always there that human beings have to go out there and strive to prove themselves in this life it's because 70% of humanity have an undefined heart center not because that's correct not because that's what life is about think of the burden of all of those children who have been raised with an undefined heart center who have been raised with something to prove that their whole life is about proving things the madness of the normal mind because this is the way the normal mind works it is totally caught up in all of this openness and it's the control that this openness exercises all right let's put the spanner in the mix here <clears throat> this next illustration is just the transit for today you know it's just the transit and it's the transit for today at a given moment you look at that transit you see all of these various activations each and every one of these activations have the power to move the not self mind i mean it's one of the reasons that the uh, neutrino forecast is something that is very very important you know to familiarize yourself with what the planets are actually bringing on any given day it's not like you have to spend a great deal of time paying attention to it it's about that recognition of certain forces are at work that impinge on you today don't get trapped I mean we're all in a program we're all being set up you can see in this particular illustration that the sun is in the 50th gate in the first line you know this is the gate the cauldron the gate of the tribal laws the law giver of the tribe the rules that control everything from food to sexuality you know there is a power that is there in these forces and you see some people are just waiting for it on the other side to catch the program on that particular moment in that particular way to be taken along as the program takes you look at the nodes of the moon the nodes of the moon are about the way in which we see simply at a very simple level and so when you're thinking about the nature of the program and you're thinking about the nodal movement in the program that basically what's happening to us is as a totality as a homogenized planet we're all being given the same things to see and how deeply that can impact us the nodes here in the 13th gate and in the 7th gate well these are gates in the g center these are roll gates these are role gates of the self the seven in terms of interaction the 13 in terms of its openness both of them in this particular movement today are in the third lines the 133 that brings out pessimism it says the best can never be achieved that's what it brings so imagine what it's like if you're on the other side imagine what it's like if you're the 33 the retreat that's waiting on the other side and that normally your retreat is just sort of hanging there 
And there's that receptor on the other side. And all of a sudden it gets lit up. And for long periods of time, because the nodes can take from two and a half to four to five months in a gate, weeks and weeks in a line. And so you wake up in the morning with your 33 and suddenly there's that 13 there and the 13 is full of all this pessimism. All of it. And suddenly everything about the way in which you're looking at the world and everything that you're thinking becomes colored by that pessimism. Not only that, but on the other side you have the seventh gate and the third line is anarchy. The anarchist. There's an awful lot of people who are going to wake up in the morning, who are going to get really depressed, who are going to feel terrible about the possibilities for their future, and their mind is going to tell them to do something about it, and they will... Ah, human beings. The normal ones. The normal ones who have no idea how densely they are just in a play. How incredibly scripted it is, this play. You know, the way in which the movement is orchestrated, the way in which the homogenized consciousness is entirely controlled and focused. Human beings don't know that. They're lost in the vanity of the normal mind, in the assumption that I'm in charge of my life, uh, I make the decisions, uh, you know. Yeah, right. Okay, so let's see what happens to our example when uh, our example and the program come together and we have life. I mean, literally, in that sense, we have life. And you get to see that certain things are at work. What I have just been describing to you will build up to this the 7 and the 13. Here's somebody that normally doesn't have that. But they have the two ends hanging down, you know. That 31 and the 33 hanging there. And they're not self. And all of a sudden they get the full power of this rising up. And suddenly they're full of that pessimism and energy. Let's say that they had just begun a, a discussion about taking a job with somebody. or Let's say that they just entered into a relationship. Or let's say that they've been too long in one. The energy that's going to rise out here. These are roll gates. Here is a human being who the way in which they're going to present their role in the world is going to be adjusted by the program and they don't know that and they don't see it that way. They just suddenly feel the pessimism inside of them, the anarchy that wants to break down all and destroy all those old things. Suddenly that fills up their system and their mind goes, Whew, we better do this, you know? But it's not them. I mean, it's not them. It is their normal, homogenized personality at work in the world. This is the way human beings make decisions. Think about it. Think about it. That there is a transit and there's going to be 12 days of pessimism, and I guarantee you in these 12 days of anarchistic pessimism, all kinds of things are going to come crashing down. And those involved in it think it's them. Think it's what they wanted or what they needed or what should have happened or... I don't know. They have absolutely no idea. None, 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 none. This is what it is to be normal. The equivalent of normal is ignorant. It's ignorance. And it's not like you can point your finger at them and, you know, wag it and tell them they're bad and everything. It's not their fault. They do not know. 
There was nobody to teach them. There is nobody to tell them. It isn't necessarily their serendipity at the beginning of this kind of knowledge to be open to it and ready for it. It isn't. It's sad, but it is the way that it is. But it is the world. In order for you to be aware, you have to see the way it works. In order to be able to step beyond it, in order to be able to find what is correct for you, not what the homogenized world is going to dictate to you, not where it's going to push you, not that you just bow your head and go along to the slaughterhouse, because that's what it does, drags you along mindlessly until the end of your life. See, we are in a dense, dense, dense program. And it's not like we're not supposed to be in the program. It's not like we're not supposed to deal with all of this. We are. But we're not here to allow it to dictate our lives. I'm just like this person in a way, part of it. I have the 33. I'm open to the 13. I've been feeling this energy for months. You know, you learn a lot by knowing what something is. But it doesn't have a chance to be able to dictate the way in which my decision-making works because I don't make decisions mentally. I just observe mentally. Remember the nature of conditioning. Conditioning is not, is not the enemy. It is not the enemy. Ignorance is the enemy. You cannot get rid of your openness, nor would you want to, by the way. It's the way we connect to life. It's what's so interesting. It is the magic. But we're not here to be ruled by it, overwhelmed by it, controlled by it. That's not the story. We're here to be able to stand in our own authority and be able to navigate through this life. And then it doesn't matter what the planets are doing. It doesn't matter where things are pointing. It all becomes just interesting. It becomes what life is. You know, as long as this transit goes on, there are going to be people all over the world waking up with pessimism in their body, with a growing anarchy within them, and a mind depending on the circumstances of the life and its particular <coughs> culture, where that is going to lead. And funny about humans, in a couple of weeks it'll go away. Those things that they felt inside of them that were so important that made them jump to those stupid decisions is suddenly gone. They wake up every once in a while wondering why they did that. Where'd that come from? Because they can't find the thing inside of them that was the thing that actually took them there. Because the thing that was inside of them that took them there is gone. It's just gone. And how confused a human being ends up being. You see, it's so easy for us to be, well, manipulated, moved. It is what normalcy is all about. To be normal in this life is to be surrendered to ignorance. It's to be surrendered to the way in which the program establishes the stereotypes that human beings live out as, as lives. You have to see. You have to see for yourself. One of the most profound ways you can do that is experiment with watching the program impact you. You know, you don't have to watch everything. Wait for those things that are going to create a definition that are going to last a few days or maybe a few weeks. Watch how that whole thing begins to work on you. Watch how it moves into your system, into your mind to begin to grasp clearly so that you can really be comfortable in being free from that. 
You cannot let go of the normalcy of the world and you cannot let go of the homogenization without the catalyzation of strategy and authority. It's where you start. But once you start on that journey, that journey of beginning to operate correctly, one of the great teachers and companions you have is the program. Truly, watch it. Watch what it does to you. Watch what it's doing to everyone around you. It'll transform your awareness. Well, hope you enjoyed that. Nice that you participated. Until next time.